Hello everyone, today I wanted to show you how to create maybe even your first 3D composition with the USD files in DaVinci Resolve 18.5 because the latest update of Resolve supports USD workflow which is a real game changer for a few different reasons that I will explain to you in this video and to make things easier I decided to share with you my working files so you'll be able to create exactly the same composition as me and you can download these files by clicking on the link below this video. This is the result. I hope you like it. Let's start. And before we start creating our composition with the assets I have provided, let me tell you a bit about the USD in DaVinci Resolve. So USD stands for Universal Scene Description which is a framework for interchange of 3D computer graphics data. And what it means for us is that now we can use the assets created in Blender or Houdini and we can bring them into Resolve. We can manipulate, relight and animate them, which is a real game changer as it allows very easy collaboration between VFX artists. And when we go to the effects, then tools and then USD, we have here 13 completely new nodes that will enable us to work with the USD files and their names start with U, so they're easy to find and I will show you how it works today. So once you've downloaded the files that I've provided, you can just open the media pool and you can simply drag and drop that folder into the software. And here we've got two USD files, the fox and the tree and other elements these USD files are made of. So don't remove anything, please, as it won't work properly. And let me just drop the fox down here first. And the media out node has also been automatically created. And every USD file comes in as a U loader, but we can obviously rename it. So let's call it fox again to avoid any confusion. And then I'll do the same with the tree. And now we can close the media pool and then let's place our fox in the left viewer to show you how it looks in the 3d space so as you can see it's a completely ready 3d model with the color and the structure burned into it and to be able to view it like this we have to have a camera light enabled up here as when we change it to solid it appears as a white model and when we change it to scene lights it's black because in order to make the color and the structure visible in this mode we would have to have the scene lights enabled but I will clarify how it works in a minute so let's go back to the camera light mode and then let's place the tree in the left viewer to see how it looks so the tree is much smaller than the fox now but I will teach you exactly how to change the size the position and how to make it look better but before we do it, we have to create a proper node structure. So first we'll need some transform nodes connected to our USD files to be able to manipulate the sizing. So let's hit shift space to bring up the tools. Let's search for the U transform and let's connect it to our USD files. And now to be able to combine all elements together, we'll need the merge node. And for the USD files, this node is called umerge. So let me find it and let me connect our elements with it. And what's cool about this node is that we can connect to it unlimited amount of elements or lights. So for the whole composition, we'll only need one umerge node. But before we carry on with building our 3D composition, we need a renderer node to be able to render the composition properly. And in this case, it's called U renderer. So let me find it and let's connect it after the U merge and before the media out. And our media out node is already placed in the right viewer and it shows the final result. So now we can see that the fox and the tree are almost completely out of frame. They are both too big basically to fit in standard HD composition. So let's click on the first U transform node and using the controls in the inspector. Let's make the tree smaller and let's move it around. 
like this. We can also do it here manually in the 3D space. So do what suits you best. And now I will do the same with the fox. We can also rotate our elements like this. And we can obviously tweak the composition at any point. So I will just do it quickly for now to make it fully visible in the frame. I will actually make the tree bigger. And also another cool thing is that duplicating the elements has never been easier. So if I want to have multiple trees, I don't have to use any additional duplicate nodes. The only thing I have to do is to create a few more U-transform nodes. So you can grab them from the toolbox or you can simply use Command C and Command V to duplicate them. And then when we connect all U-transform nodes with the merge node, our tree is already multiplied. And now I can also make them smaller and I can move them around as I did before. Something like this will do. And now we can see that the composition is still a bit too dark and not very appealing. And this is because we have to add some lighting. And the first lighting effect I want to show you is called Udom Light. So let me just grab it and let me connect it with the U-Merge node. And nothing happened because the Udom Light is a scene light. So to be able to see it, we have to click on the U-Renderer. And then in the Inspector, we have to change lighting from Camera to Scene. And voila. And also let's play the merge node in the left viewer so you'll be able to see how the default UDOM lighting looks. And here also we have to change the mode from the camera light to the scene light. And look what we've got. Our composition is basically based on the beach now. And this is because the UDOM lighting is an image-based lighting that surrounds the entire model, forcing light inwards and it enables the user to simulate real-world environments by using panoramic HDR images. And the beach is simply a DaVinci Resolve's default UDOM lighting, and we can also manipulate it. So let's click on the UDOM light node, and here in the inspector we can click on the transform tab and we can move it around. So feel free to try yourself how it looks. And now let's maybe grab a U camera mode, as this way we'll be able to change the perspective of the composition easily. So let's connect it with the U merge node. And now our composition disappeared. And this is simply because the camera is in the wrong position. And I like to change the position of the camera directly in the 3D space with the mouse. But you feel free to use the transform tab in the inspector, like this but we'll be using keyframes and animating it later. So let me zoom in again. And now let's create a sky and a grass and we'll be using U shapes to do it. So I'll again hit shift space to bring up the tools and I'll search for the U shape. Then I'll rename it as this will be my sky. And I'll connect it with the U merge node. And here we've got a capsule, which is a default shape. And in order to change it to sky, let's change this shape to sphere first, like this. And now we basically want our composition to be inside this sphere. So we have to make it much bigger. So let's go to the transform and let's change the scale. Five is still way too small, but we can change it manually. So let's say, go up to 50 and now our composition is inside the sphere and now to make it look like a sky we can go to material options and we can for example change the diffuse mode from color to texture and we can browse the computer and apply any high-res picture I have given you a JPEG that you can use. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I wanted to make things easier for you. So let's navigate to our Sky JPEG and look what happened. 
the picture has been basically applied onto the sphere. And then we can go again to the transform tab and we can change the scale and the position of the sky. We can move it around like this and we can rotate it. So have fun with it and feel free to use my JPEG if you want to. But let me show you how to create a sky in case you don't want to use any external textures. So let's go back to the material tab and let's change the diffuse mode to color and I'll just make it dark blue as it was at night time. And here we can make it look metallic if we want to. It's a very cool feature actually, like this. And now let's also create a grass. So I'll grab the U shape again, and then I'll rename it. And this time I'll change it to plane. Then in the transform tab, I'll make it very big. I'll rotate it. Let's do 90 degrees for now. I have to make it even bigger actually. Like this. And I will move it down. And then I'll change the angle again to create the illusion that it's a surface. Okay, we can always change it later. And again, we can go to the material options and we can change the color to green. But I've also given you another picture you can use as a texture if you want. So let me go to texture and let me navigate to it. It's called grass and I think it looks quite nice. So I'll leave it. And I'll make the plane a bit smaller, so the quality of the texture looks a bit better. Okay, and here we can also play with the metallic option if we want to change the look of the texture further. But now I also really want to show you how to create a moon as well. So let's go back to the camera first, and let's move it back a little bit to make the frame wider. And when we move the camera too far, and it's outside the sphere, we obviously can't see the composition inside a sphere. So we just have to click on the sky node and then transform and then we can make the sphere bigger like this. So let's adjust the camera again. This should work. And now let's grab another U shape and this will be my moon. And now I will connect it with the U merge and then let's change it to sphere again. And now when we zoom in, we can tell that the sphere shape is not perfectly round. So to improve it, we have to increase base and high submissions to the max here. Okay, now looks way better. And then let's go to the transform and let's place the moon where it should be, behind the trees. Maybe here, okay. And let's go to the material and let's change the color. So I'll make it yellow. And let's open the emissive tab. And let's change the color here as well. So the moon will look like it was really emitting some light. Maybe the moon shouldn't be yellow, but I actually like it like this. Okay, and we can also make it metallic if we want to, so feel free to adjust it to your liking. Now I will show you some U lights we have available. So let me tidy my notes and let's search for a U distant light and let's connect it with the U merge. And now the composition looks way brighter. And again, here in the inspector, we can change the position of the light and we can go to controls and we can decrease the intensity of it. I'll leave it somewhere here. And then let's try a U cylinder light. And the way this tool casts the light is a bit different. It's more of a directional light. 
but I will move it somewhere here just to cast a bit of light onto the trees. And let's also try a U disk light. And this is how it works. And again, I will just use it to lighten my composition in a very subtle way, like this. And I actually forgot to mention that when we go here to the U renderer, we can find out that Blackmagic Design have developed a completely new Storm Renderer that is very, very fast. I have definitely noticed a difference working with the USD files. So you don't need a super fast computer and your playback should be fine. It's a very nice change in DaVinci Resolve 18.5. But coming back to our animation, let's move the cursor to the very first frame. Then let's click on our camera and let's create keyframes next to all values here. And I will move my camera manually. Maybe something like this. And then let's move the cursor to the very last frame. And let's change the position of the camera again. And let's watch it. Not bad, but to improve the animation, we can combine the U camera with the U transform. So let me add another U transform node after the U camera node. And let's adjust the position on the first frame. And let's go to the last frame. And let's maybe try to zoom in to our fox like this. And let's see. Okay. And don't forget that you can also change the position of the elements at any point. So let me move this tree somewhere else. Okay, maybe here. And now, let's just see the final result full screen. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.